Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Cybersecurity Landscape of Paris Region. In the next 45 minutes, we will be talking about the state of cybersecurity and digital trust in the French capital region. My name is Thomas, and I am in charge of the deep tech industry practice at Choose Paris Region. For those of you who don't know uh, Choose Paris Region yet, uh, we are the Economic Development Agency of the Paris region. Our mission is to advise international companies looking to set up in France. Each year, we support more than 1,000 companies in their global expansion. As an example, in the past two years, we supported Tanium, Bitglass, or Kets Quantum Security as they opened an office in, in the Paris region. And also the extension of Datadog and Onfido as they nearly doubled their Parisian staff. So, Choose Paris Region provides all the resources you need to accelerate your business in France from initial, <clears throat> from initial decision making uh, to uh, setting up your French entity and every step in between. What we are talking about here, that can be market insights, connections to the ecosystem via our partners, legal support through our network of experts. Also, uh, we can help on your recruitment and find uh, R&D lab and much more. So I should also mention that since we are a government agency, our services are free of charge. So now before we get to the agenda and introduce our panelists, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. Practically, first, will there be a recording? Yes, you will receive the link to the replay at the end of the session. This uh, email will include a, a copy of the slides. Next, you can hear us, but you can't hear, but we can't hear you. Um, there are a couple of ways to communicate. Look at the tab at the right of your screen. You can use the chat tab to say hello and where you're from and comment the discussion. There will be a Q&A at the end. I encourage you to use the question tab instead, instead of the chat. Uh, you will be able to vote for your favorite questions to bring them up in the ranking. So let's look at the agenda. Here is the, the list of uh, topics we will be talking about today. Uh, we will start with an overview of the French and Paris region uh, cybersec ecosystem. Then we'll have an intro of the Campus Cyber by Lucille. After that, it will be time to address fundamental topics to develop a cybersecurity business. I'm talking about access to talent, how to enter the market, uh, how to optimize your investment, and so on. So we will end uh, with a Q&A session. OK, so um, I have the pleasure to welcome a great panel today. Uh, our first guest is uh, Lucille from Campus Cyber. Please introduce yourself, uh, Lucille, in uh, one minute. So we uh, we have a, an overview of, uh, of you, you three. Well, one minute will be more than enough. But hi, everyone. My name is Lucille, and I'm the head of development and international, international cooperation for uh, Campus Cyber. And, and don't have much more to say. Yes, you will, you will introduce uh, Campus Cyber in a minute. Then uh, Guillaume from uh, Dashlane, please also introduce yourself. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Guillaume Marron, I, uh, I'm co-founder and VP engineering at Dashlane. So in, uh, in a few words, Dashlane uh, mission is to make security simple for a million of organizations and their people. And the way we do that is uh, uh, through uh, proposing to businesses and, and user a password manager. Uh, so Dashlane uh, has been founded in Paris in in, in 09. Uh, we are VC backed. We have raised uh, 160 million, uh, mostly in the US, uh, and uh, we uh, we have we are 350 people uh, uh, in the, in Paris, New York, and Lisbon. So uh, we have uh, done the other journey from uh, going to uh, from Europe to uh, to the US. Thank you, Guillaume. And uh, last but not least, Axel, uh, uh, <clears throat> please uh, introduce yourself also. Ah. I think we've just lost Axel. Yeah, it, we just lost Axel. Anyway, uh, we will um, wait for him to, uh, to join the stage. Um, so 
uh, it's time to to move to uh, to the first section of the agenda, uh, introducing you to uh, the uh, ecosystem uh, first of friends uh, as the cybersecurity and digital trust markets are like uh, like anywhere in the world. This is booming, and in France, a majority of the companies have suffered a, a cyber attack. Uh, this generates an increase in the average budget allowed to cybersecurity, uh, as well as an appeal for innovative solutions. So this um, this is the situation uh, today in uh, in France. Axel, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. One of my computer just crashed, so lucky yeah. to always have a spare. Okay, <laughs> so Axel, just uh, leaving you, introducing your, yourself. Now, basically, uh, Axel Dreyfus, I'm one of the co-founder of a cybersecurity school located in uh, Sakanta, which is called 2600. And prior to this, I've been working in tech and, uh, and cybersecurity for the last three years, mostly in the US for 20 years, uh, Japan, three years, and London, uh, three years as well. So I've been around quite many through continents and countries, and I finally came back to one of the most interesting interesting place in the world for me to do business in the IT field, which is Paris. <laughs> Thank you, Axel. Um, so, uh, back to, to the presentation of the ecosystem. Um, the French market is the second market in Europe in size, uh, with the national revenue for the sector around uh, 13 billion euros. The industry counts more than 2,000 companies employing about 66,000 qualified people. Uh, the uh, cyber security uh, sector is also a question of uh, startups. Just to give you an overview, with uh, 150 startups really purely specialized in cybersec, the uh, French ecosystem is dynamic. These startups are growing well, and nearly two out of three are based in Paris region. So please find more information in the excellent uh, radar uh, made by the consultancy company Wavezone. So when uh, we are talking about uh, companies uh, and, and these young startups are also working close to big names uh, from Atos, which is officially today uh, the, the world number one managed cybersecurity services provider, according to Gartner, uh, uh, from Atos to Thales and uh, in between many other companies coming from abroad uh, are in, uh, in the market Locally, uh, we helped many of the, these uh, international ones uh, that were, uh, you know, attracted by the large customer base of the local ec ecosystem, uh, and they, they set up in the, the, the past decade or years, and, and they are growing today. Uh, so. Uh, the uh, ecosystem is also uh, can rely on, 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 you know, a strong academic network and also clusters uh, to network and develop their solutions. Choose Paris Region is here to help you find the right partner in this uh, uh, complex uh, um, choice of, of partners. The, the, these, these are just examples of uh, the kind of um, cluster you can find. There are also uh, good opportunities, like, uh, for instance, uh, through a startup program called uh, Cyber at Station F. If you need an accelerator for your company when setting up in France, we recommend it. Uh, that offers a six month international startup acceleration program managed by Thales. We will have a, a complete presentation of Campus Cyber, but just let me know that, let me tell you that uh, it is a unique innovation site uh, with uh, 26,000 square meters to federate startups, VCs, schools, research, and large corporations. Uh, so Lucille will, will introduce it to you in a minute. Um, but as Paris region is much more than just the city of Paris. Uh, I wanted to, to talk about Paris Saclay. Uh, let me see. This is one, one of the world, uh, one of the eight world best innovation clusters. Uh, the Plateau de Saclay uh, is, uh, is at 40 minutes away from Notre Dame, a kind of uh, Skolkovo or Silicon Valley, you, you name it. Uh, it hosts 15% of the whole French research capacity, both private and public, uh, just uh, in one place, uh, one single area. 
Um, its university, the University Paris-Saclay, is ranked 13th in the world and first uh, in mathematics according to the Shanghai ranking. So inside Paris-Saclay, the cities of uh, Saint-Quentin and Yvelines, SQY or SKY if you will, offers a unique concentration of cybersecurity players, uh, plus six SOCs, and the first French cybersecurity school, Ecole 2600, uh, that Axel is leading. So it's uh, it's time to uh, to let uh, Lucille uh, introduce the uh, Campus Cyber. Lucille, the, the floor is yours. I'm just sharing the presentation. Here you go. Here you go. Yes, thank you, Thomas. So, um, hi, everyone. Um, today, I will just uh, introduce you to the Campus Cyber um, storytelling more than uh, everything that we are doing. So, it will be very wide, not only about innovation and startups, but uh, I will um, obviously talk about it also. So, first, Campus Cyber has been initiated by the French President of the Republic and is the place of reference for uh, cybersecurity in France. So basically, it brings together the main national and international actors of the field. Uh, today, it's about 160 members that come from diverse lines of businesses, uh, such as companies from uh, large groups to SMEs, uh, government departments, training organization, research actors, and association. So Campus Cyber aims at bringing together this cybersecurity community and developing synergies. So um, the Campus Cyber Motos, huge. Ah, it works. So the Campus Cyber Motos is together ser serving a great cyber nation. So this motto reflects the challenge faced by the cybersecurity ecosystem, which is the need to work together in order to build a digital security around trust. But as cybersecurity is not only about threats, Campus Cyber promotes also opportunities that come within this field. So first, let me tell you a little bit about the story of Campus Cyber. Um, I won't go deep into this because I'm sure you all know that, but there is a, a, an overall a cybersecurity context that uh, made Campus Cyber very uh, relevant. Uh, so for example, in 2022, the World Economic Forum included cyber attacks in its top 10 uh, business risk and the last anticipated uh, to be free, uh, six, uh, six trillion euros for uh, the years 2021. So we see that there is um, a growing uh, threat. And so that poses a major economic and, de and democratic risk. That's why the story um, of Campus Cyber started when Michel Vandenberg, our president, was appointed by the French um, prime minister in July uh, 2019 to think the project. So basically this, what we call campus mission, uh, carried out this exploratory stage in connection with the French ecosystem. So the idea was to enrich and define the project to meet the needs of cybersecurity ecosystem. So the campus cyber mission went to other campuses in the world dedicated to cybersecurity, um, such as uh, Biersheva in Israel or Skolkovo in Russia. And they also um, heard the ecosystem, the French um, cybersecurity ecosystem. And those hearings led to a report presented to the prime uh, minister, which constituted a concrete proposal on how to create uh, the French campus cyber. Um, so now let me um, present you the results of this work. So as um, Thomas said just uh, before, so Campus Cyber is a tower of uh, 26,000 uh, square meters located at La Défense, uh, which is the French business center next to Paris. So the localization of Campus Cyber was a key element to guarantee its, its success, and we decided to go meet the ecosystem at its heart. So the workplace of Campus Cyber were, were designed with high uh, quality standards in order to attract the best talents of cybersecurity ecosystem. So Campus Cyber um, is composed of uh, several uh, spaces in order to facilitate working activities uh, such as um, event rooms, classrooms, and spaces dedicated to innovation as to promote creating a creativity and excellence, as you can see uh, on the screen. Um, so, since its creation, Campus Cyber resolves around an ecosystem frame um, of mind. 
So basically, our main goal, uh, which is a true challenge, is to assist the members of the ecosystem to shift from a business-oriented frame of mind to a collaborative one. So for that, Campus Cyber model is based on several specificity linked to its ecosystem approach. Um, first, a strong public and private collaboration. So Campus Cyber is a private company, but it's owned uh, at 44% by public institutions. And so the French uh, government allocated 1 million euros to the ecosystem, not only to the Campus Cyber, and the NC is involved in the implementation of Campus Cyber also. So we see that there is a strong uh, public and private cooperation. Also, we have 30% um, 30, uh, 30, 30 of spaces dedicated to innovation. So to foster collaboration between actors and make France a leading innovation player, Campus Cyber dedicates um, those space to innovation. So the aim is to take advantage of the presence of industrial schools and researchers in one place to bring, uh, to bring these actors to work together. Also, something that is really specific is that uh, there, there are beneficiaries at the Campus Cyber. So basically to involve the entire cybersecurity ecosystem, both pure players, but also beneficiaries, Campus Cyber counts among this member half of the 440. And it also meets uh, the mission of bringing together different types of actors and uh, collaborating. And last but not least, we also have what we call um, an ecosystem governance. So it has been decided to distinguish the capital deposit with the decision-making power of the shareholders. So therefore, all actors are represented, whatever their size or share, within Campus Cyber. And so this choice is linked to the uniting operating mode that represents Campus Cyber, uh, which is a collaborative place aiming at finding common answers to freights. The only thing that you have to know is that only French and European actors can become shareholders and therefore take part uh, in the governance. However, it is possible to join Campus Cyber uh, as an international actor, whether uh, by renting workspaces, but we are full now, or by becoming a partner member and therefore taking part to activities of uh, Campus Cyber. So, uh, the governing model, okay, wait. Okay, so Campus Cyber, just to introduce you um, about our activities. So our activities um, are organized around three pillars, education, um, innovation, and operation. So first, education is uh, one of the first priority of Campus Cyber. So Campus Cyber want to address the lack of talent in cybersecurity. We have a role to play in creating callings by working on the attractiveness of the profession, in particular for female talents. So the lack of talent translates into an inability to meet the needs of the sectors, even though the demand is increasing. So in France, approx approximately um, 15,000 positions are unfilled, and it reaches up to more than 3.5 million jobs when looking at it around the world. So as we know, this digitalization of society intensifies, and so cybersecurity ecosystem suffers, uh, no, and so, sorry, cybersecurity is a sector full of jobs. And so um, cybersecurity ecosystem suffers also from a poor image, and as a result, training courses are not sufficiently filled and even forced to close due to the lack of candidates. So this is a real issue. And also the sector is uh, largely male, but I think everyone knows it. And so to address this, Campus Cyber will launch a wide television and radio campaign to work on the image of cybersecurity sector. Um, so the second pillar um, is innovation. So basically, as I said before, we really want to foster more innovation. So part of our mission is to help entrepreneurs create new cybersecurity companies and accelerate their development. So we think Campus Cyber will be conductive to the exchange of information and expertise between startups, researchers, governments, and large corporates. So just to give you an example, in 2020, $7.8 billion were invested in cyber companies worldwide. However, this distribution is very uneven and is concentrated in the United States for more than three quarters. So Campus Cyber has, has therefore put in place a startup studio dedicated to cybersecurity that will support more than 30 startups over the next three years. So it aims at facilitating the development of projects and the orientation also towards the right means. Uh, 
And so for more than a year or so, Campus Cyber has brought together a multiple of players on the topic of common goods. So just to give you uh, several examples, uh, we have a, com a community work. So for example, banks, banks have decided to start a joint work to strengthen their respective system in order to better address the threat. Um, we also work on the development of an intelligence database uh, to also on an AA platform, or also there are people who um, want to develop a training module, common training modules. And so, for example, they share training contents they, uh, in order to create new uh, training pathway based on their uh, past experience and the expression of the needs of the sector's uh, stakeholders. And also, last but not least, um, operation. Uh, so we want to promote the share of data and experience in order to reinforce the capacity of each actor to handle cyber risks. So as we say, we wish to have a team of cyber, of cyber firemen uh, re ready to react in case of uh, cyber attacks. So we believe that by working in the same tower, um, those actors will meet uh, each other easily and then be ready to face cyber risk. Um, just a quick uh, word on internationalization. Uh, so Campus Cyber not only wants to have a, a national influence, but also wants to be an important actor at a European level. Um, so first, we are candidates to what we call the European Digital Innovation Hub Network, uh, which is a European subvention. So um, it allows uh, to initiate action and to, su to support and establish a network of partnership around uh, Europe with both public and private uh, entities. And we also want to uh, connect with other European actors who share the same ecosystem and share our um, common philosophy. And so we, we want to welcome uh, businesses and international delegation, for example. And that's it for me. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Lucille. Uh, that's, that's really uh, impressive. And uh, it is just the beginning. Can you uh, just uh, remind us when the Campus Cyber uh, was inaugurated? Uh, just a little bit more than two months ago. It has been inaugurated in, uh, by the, um, the Minister of Economy uh, in February, mid-February. Okay. So, so young, but uh, still um, yeah, very promising. Uh, congratulations. And um, so we, we are now uh, entering the uh, question, uh, the, the panel uh, discussion. So um, I have some, some question for you, uh, starting with Axel, because um, uh, Axel, contrary to what Lucille said about the training courses that are not uh, all full, your school didn't suffer from, from a lack of candidates, uh, as, as far as I know. <laughs> Um, can you can you uh, remind us the, the figures and how did you manage to attract the best of the best? Uh, I will not tell you how we did. Uh, this I'll keep no. it for myself. Uh, <laughs> basically, we had last year 840 persons that applied to the school, and we only committed to uh, 60 uh, less than eight percent of the uh, of the candidates. So we had 60 students. This year, uh, we shall have more than 2,000 candidates and I will only take out of the maximum tops 200. Now, the how we do it, this I, of course, will keep it for myself, but uh, there are ways uh, you could attract uh, students, including females, uh, students as well, uh, but this you have to go into non-conventional, uh, I would say, tactics in order to uh, achieve this. Okay, um, but it's it's quite impressive and, and, and it, it illustrates the fact that there is a, a quite large uh, talent pool um, and the uh, this uh, question of talent is always uh, the, the the first that international companies um, ask me. Uh, so uh, talking about Dashlane, um, could you could you uh, share with us, uh, Guillaume, uh, why uh, a, a company the size of Dashlane uh, with uh, international reach uh, uh, has opened an office in France and uh, what, what, is, what is the motivation? Yes, uh, thanks, thanks for the question. Uh, I, for, for my experience, I think the, the, the main benefit of, of uh, opening an office in another country, uh, especially in a different region, is uh, is really about the hiring pool. Um, it, it will increase uh, uh, basically hiring capability to 
well, France, but also uh, uh, to uh, uh, nearby countries where people can uh, maybe relocate from. Um, and, and, and not only for tech, but I think for all uh, position in a company. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, what, I, what I can see uh, from uh, quite of a distance because I'm more on the engineering side is that I think it's easier to sell into different regions if you are also based into different region because it will help you to uh, uh, understand the cultural differences to also maybe recruit uh, 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 like uh, uh, salespeople also uh, in, in the in the same region. So I think globally it's like increasing the hiring pool because most startup and, and tech companies and companies in general want to hire uh, the best people. And uh, we have a lot <laughs> doing that. And so basically the bigger the pool, the easier. Uh, uh, I, that's as simple as that. More specifically about France and, and about uh, 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 compared to the US, uh, of course, the the, the cost uh, of development is is uh, is significantly lower uh, due to a lot of of difference of costs uh, about salaries, about uh, mm -hmm. the cost of the offices and so on. Uh, so uh, um, I don't know the exact number, but some people uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, twice uh, uh, cheaper or twice uh, uh, more expensive, depending on how you look at it. Uh, that's also is is uh, uh, partly due to the uh, Tax credits for research that uh, that we have in France. So I think that's that's really uh, about the yeah the, the talent pool uh, mostly. Excellent. Okay. And um, uh, do you, do you think that France is well positioned? Uh, I mean, ge geographically, uh, to uh, to be uh, a place to uh, to set up a multicultural team uh, to uh, to reach uh, the, the the countries uh, nearby and to uh, um, how how do you think uh, because you you experience it every day uh, um, is it easy to uh, to reach uh, these other locations around? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's easy. I know if it's easy because recruitment is always difficult. So I, I, I guess I wouldn't say it's easy, but I, I think it's definitely easier uh, for, for several reasons. First, you will have people who are interested into relocating uh, uh, for many reasons. Uh, and so uh, um, uh, it's easier uh, for people to relocate from uh, Berlin to Paris than from Berlin to uh, the US, for instance, uh, like family is closer and, and many other things. Um, but also, uh, time zone is, is a real thing. Depending on how you, you work, uh, um, uh, you might want to think about that. At Dashlane, what we try to do is that we try as much as possible to have co-located teams, which mm -hmm. means that we try to create scrum teams that uh, ideally uh, have people from the same time zone. And so uh, having a, a presence uh, in France can uh, also allow you to create those teams and recruit in France, but also in other countries and having uh, potentially full remote people from other countries than France, but close enough from a time zone perspective so they can really work the whole day together. And with COVID and, and with uh, like the hybrid uh, world that we are living today, uh, having someone who is remote from Spain or, or, or Poland or, or Berlin uh, is not so much different than having someone that is in Paris, but that you uh, uh, only see uh, once a week or once a month. This um, uh, create a sense of um, this is the same as the situation for for uh, what, what COVID changed. Uh, you you all have um, uh, uh, an idea of what uh, what is different uh, today. Uh, okay, it's it's different today. Uh, and since COVID uh, uh, came, we uh, we have uh, all. We need we need uh, we need to have remote people. Uh, so, uh, Axel, do you uh, you think that um, it's um, it's gonna it's gonna change uh, or come back to uh, to normal, uh, or do we have to uh, hire people wherever they come from? And the other question is how to attract them uh, somewhere and to retain them. Uh, talking about talent is also talking about retaining them. This is a very large question. I mean, the first thing is uh, um, we, we, we decided to go to Saint-Quentin for multiple reasons. One of the first is it's one of the largest, I mean, 
cybersecurity ecosystem in France, where the companies are. Now, as we are in a work study uh, program, they spend two weeks at school, four weeks in companies where they work. So, of course, we have to triangulate between school, the company, and where they live. Now, being at the west side of Paris, it is cheaper for students to live uh, nearby Saint-Quentin that it would cause them to work in Paris. I mean, if you work for US-based companies like Qualys, of course, they're going to pay you 250K per year. You have a well number of apartments you could have in the saint germain des prés or Champs-Élysées where you could stay. But as a student, when you only get maybe 1500 per month, I mean, location is something essential. It has to do with living. So that was one of the reasons is we actually been uh, putting our school in Saint-Quentin also to take care of housing issues. By the way, the second thing is Saint-Quentin from La Défense, it's only 30 minutes. And to Saint-Lazare, it's uh, 30 minutes. And personally, you should not look at Paris as a map with the distances, but the transportation types. There are some parts of Paris that are very close to Saint-Quentin compared to others who live in Paris. Now, regarding uh, talents, what I would say uh, is, uh, as we are in a work-study program, usually companies, when they hire students, and we usually uh, take our students when they already have a master uh, in engineering uh, or in programming. So, and after we take them for three years, so we specialize in them in cybersecurity. And not only cybersecurity, but also security itself. That is something we could talk about for hours, but we also work on physical security. Um, by the way, it was so easy. We went pitching to a French bank. Their firewall was good, but their physical security sucked. We could enter the building anytime. I mean, just believe how, how insane this is. Uh, mm. Also, what we, we try to do is 80%, uh, 85% of companies that hire apprentices, they keep them afterwards. People are faithful to the first company, to their first job. So maybe what I would say is uh, in France, out of all the jobs Lucine has been talking about, a huge amount of them are currently served by apprenticeship. And usually 85% of those people are faithful to the companies that gave them the first job. Now, the second thing, uh, if this will change the way it works, I mean, uh, of course, you would always find some very um, particular person. I'm, I'm thinking about Jonathan Salwan, which is uh, one of the uh, a great guy in the cybersecurity uh, community. He lives on his boat. And he just travels around the world and he sometimes sits some zero days. I mean, this is one extreme. Uh, but now, usually what I think, of course, COVID has changed it. But if, if I looked at all my IT teams I had in the past 20 years, we've already been remote for many years. And if you just took uh, uh, my SQL as a company, it was one of the first company that was sold that even never had a headquarter. They never physically met. So I think today, uh, trying to look at location is something that for me is not really meaningful. Uh, what matters for me is, uh, if I would take an example, is um, if I take Guillaume and actually their great adventure in the US with Ashley. My son is studying in the US. The cost of the studies in the US for two years is $130,000. Okay, so this is just basically uh, what I'm paying for my son is 65,000 per year. Okay, so this is one extreme. Now in France, uh, because you were talking about what you're doing in terms of government program, our cost for a three year full time uh, program in cybersecurity is zero. And also one of the great advantage in France is we have so much taxes that the way we spend them sometime, I mean, is free studies. And this is something that really matters. And also, and I think you could talk about this, there are great incentives in terms of research, and you started to speak about that, that would even allow you to lower the cost of your wages. So what I would say is, uh, if you're a foreign company, and I had companies in Japan, in the US, in England, and at the end, if you could, there, France, I would say, is the cheapest country in the world when it has to do with the quality of, engineer, of his engineers, and maybe you, you could talk about Superdeck. I mean, you're the bright and brightest. Uh, the quality of the engineers we produce in France are extreme. Uh, and also, uh, of course, the, the, all the subsidies the government will allow you to have in France, allow you to have maybe the cheapest research in the world. So I would say uh, that if there's one place I would actually consider doing my research or my production would be basically France. Uh, mostly because it's the way we produce the best engineer, the best labs, at the cheapest cost. Excellent. Thank you for reminding us this, these criteria. Um, this is really important and, and uh, far uh, uh, unknown uh, to most of the uh, foreign entrepreneurs. Um, yes, France is a very supportive ecosystem. Um, and it's also a place where you can find, as, as you said, Axel, uh, excellent engineers, well-trained, 
well selected, I must say. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so a question for Guillaume: uh, Can can we uh, can we find uh, good talents in France? Can we? Uh, what what did, what makes uh, French talent uh, extra? Well, that, I think that's a great question. So. I guess the, the first thing I would say is that it's uh, it's very difficult to compare uh, because uh, how, how do you say one person is better than the other? It's 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 a it's a bit of a hard uh, a question. But I've been uh, uh, experimenting hiring in in, in Paris, in, in France, in New York, in Lisbon also, where we have opened uh, an office recently uh, or, or more recently. Uh, uh, and my take is that we can find really good engineers everywhere. Um, they are very good engineer in, in, in New York. They are very good engineer in France, in Paris, in Lisbon. Uh, I think the, the, the question is more about the tension between uh, the offer and the, and, and, and the demand. And um, I will say from my experience, the tension is much higher uh, in, in the US where we have a lot of, uh, of, of, of startups with, uh, with deep pockets. Uh, and uh, the tension is, is a bit lower in France and a bit lower in, in, in Lisbon, although that's changing because we have seen uh, more and more uh, money from, from VCs uh, being invested in, into, into startup, which is great, but which is also uh, increasing the tension on recruitment uh, through money, but also through just the number of opportunities. Um, so yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think it's hard to write, but I think they are good really good engineers everywhere. And I think the question is more about uh, having, uh, a, a, like I was saying, a big enough talent pool for for uh, for you to adjust that pressure to your needs in terms of recruitment. And so I think that's a question about how much do you need to grow? How fast do you need to grow? And does your current talent pool allow you to do so? And if not, then do you need to increase it and, and, and benefit from all the, the good thing I won't repeat uh, that Axel was 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 describing. Uh, that being said, uh, also the price is 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 also something you can factor in in the tension, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, of course uh, 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 lower price means that you can uh, lower costs, or it means that you can also uh, go uh, go more aggressive uh, in terms of uh, in terms of salary. Um, of course, that won't be sustainable, and and that will uh, balance over time, especially with COVID, because now you have more and more people uh, that uh, who takes job from from a, a remote uh, location. Excellent. Thank you very much. And um, as if you don't have any other uh, comment, uh, as we approach the end of our presentation, uh, we wanted to uh, to share with you uh, some 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 elements and answer the answer the questions of the audience. So first, the question. Uh, I have a question from Michel. Uh, Michel is asking to uh, Lucille uh, a question about um, the potential of quantum technology uh, in the field of cybersecurity. So uh, I have the feeling that cybersecurity and quantum computing can have a strong adherence, for example, in the way our quantum can accelerate the learning of machine learning models. Could we consider a cross-fertilization between startup industrial and, uh, and another in this field, uh, can the cyber campus uh, help in that? So the question more generally can be uh, summarized in, um, uh, is, is campus cyber made to uh, host such um, interdisciplinary uh, uh, collaboration and uh, field, uh, new field of research, I would say? Well, I'm not a technical person, so I won't be able to, <laughs> to answer precisely on, on this point. No, but yeah, of course, the, the main point of Campus Cyber is to help those uh, projects to, to live and to exist. So we have um, spaces dedicated to innovation. So of course, if there is such a project, the idea is to be the place in which actors can meet and okay. can work on a, on a project. So I would say yes for this one, but also ways, uh, yes for other ones. So of course. 
but for the technical part, uh, don't don't ask me. <laughs> of course, we are not here to solve quantum uh, technology and make it simple. Um, it's uh, the time for uh, Bastien's question. Um, hackers are always trying to find unconventional ways to penetrate systems. It would be consistent to get unconventional ways to teach of teaching in Ecole 2600. Uh, but is it actually possible to teach systemic moves in order to think outside of the box? Excel, <laughs> good question. <laughs> no, I was just recalling this um, AI that supposedly hacked NVIDIA and Microsoft two weeks ago until they found it was not some type of AI, but a 16 uh, years old kid in uh, London, you know, in his mother's basement that actually uh, put down this company. They were part of a group called Natus. They were pretty smart. Uh, to think outside the box, that's a very good question, Bastien. Uh, I think, uh, mostly speaking, I'm not only talking about cybersecurity, but I think we there's one environment that has not been uh, changing enough is education as a whole. Uh, I have a very good friend of mine to launch a, a fund, you know, only targeting education, Mike C. Levet. Uh, and we had those endless conversations saying that all fields could be transportation, it could be uh, medical. I mean, all fields, they have mutated, except education. We still have blackboards. So, uh, of course, I think education in itself should change now to teach cybersecurity. I think one way of teaching cybersecurity is the way we do it is uh, we are working bottom up. First, we start with uh, hardware architecture, I mean, processor, and after then assembly language. And after we go up, 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 usually other schools, they start to have more a top down approach, we more bottom up. Now we, all, we also take security as a whole. We do, I mean, physical security. We have uh, programs with uh, Gigien, which is the French Special Forces. Uh, we do lock picking. Uh, we're trying to see uh, uh, security as a whole. And sometimes when you step aside and you took a look at security itself, you would actually take social engineering, you would take open source intelligence, you would take, which is part of CTI generally, you know, cyber threat intelligence. But usually there are not so many schools that actually teach you to be an analyst as well. So thinking outside of the box, uh, it's very hard, it's more a mindset, but I would say go in the arena, practice and train. Uh, we are very aggressive in CTF. Uh, I mean, uh, one of our founders, and then he's been part of the tech team in the world uh, in, on uh, CTF time, so we've been pretty good at it. We, we went to DEFCON twice, uh, finals, uh, and now we're trying to, uh, to put this back in our school. They also have to compete. You know, I mean, learning is great, Competing is great as well. So think inside the box, I would say go get challenged in companies, go work on, on side projects and go on CTFs as well. And um, if I'm not wrong, Lucille, uh, you hosted at Campus Cyber uh, a Hackathon recently. Did you? Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. How, how, last, how was uh, last week. Okay. Last week, uh, Yes We Act, so which is a French company. Yes. Uh, also, the, a bug bounty on the campus cyber with uh, hackers coming from all around Europe. And for uh, two days, they mm -hmm. try to uh, find the bridges uh, into three major companies in France. Yeah, that's part of the unconventional way to uh, to, to learn and uh, excellent initiative. I, I think that uh, uh, looking at the success of Yes We Hack, uh, which is a growing company, uh, we, we we can uh, uh, easily uh, see that yes, th this is a, a booming uh, way to a new way uh, uh, to, uh, to to teach and to uh, to educate. Yeah. Um, there is a, a question uh, about uh, from from Peter about the um, uh, how uh, would we best collaborate with you in France. Uh, Peter is uh, uh, leading, I guess, uh, a Danish company sp specializing in uh, uh, data cloud protection. Um, so this uh, company uh, has. Uh, some uh, reach in Denmark, Switzerland, Germany, and US. So the next step is is France. Why we already uh, tried to uh, give some uh, some arguments uh, uh, about that, but the uh, the idea is that it's quite simple to uh, to set up a company in France, uh, and we at Choose Paris Region are here to uh, to even is uh, this uh, different steps, administrative and legal steps. Uh, so uh, this is an open door, Peter, for, for you to, uh, to uh, um, see how we can uh, help you 
uh, a, what, what, whatever the kind of company you, you want to, uh, uh, to set up. Um, is there any other question? Uh, I think the, they, they can also come from Berit, uh, George, no? Okay, so anyway, I have some um, elements to um, uh, to share with you coming from uh, my presentation in a second look. Um, so uh, this is a list of uh, events that uh, after all, uh, no, next. Yes, here we are. A list of events uh, that are um, happening in Paris region. Uh, I will let uh, the I will let you um, find the links in the chat, but also in the presentation that you will receive by email. Uh, these are different uh, kind of uh, conferences, networking events uh, that are on the technology field or are really on the application field, depending on, on, on the, the type of event. Uh, Paris Cyber Summit is even uh, one that deals with uh, all the geopolitical uh, aspects of uh, cybersecurity. It's a very uh, interesting one, small, yeah. but very, uh, very impressive one. Um, I suggest that we uh, meet uh, for uh, the FIC, uh, Forum International of Cybersecurity uh, in June. Uh, it will be in Lille, uh, so one hour uh, away from Paris by train. Uh, it's uh, the largest concentration of uh, cyber uh, security players in, uh, in Europe, I guess. Uh, so the, uh, the idea is to, uh, yes, to uh, schedule a meeting over there. I will be, uh, I will attend it. Um, so finally, uh, I suggest that uh, you go uh, uh, to, to, to be sure not to, uh, to miss anything of uh, what's going on in the Paris uh, region. Uh, you go on our webpage uh, at chooseparisregion.org uh, to uh, subscribe to our digital revolution um, newsletter. Uh, that will bring every month uh, news, events, uh, opportunities uh, for you to uh, to, uh, to grow your company in uh, the Paris region and especially uh, around the digital space. So um, I just look at if there is any question. No. So thank you very much. It's time for us to wrap up. Uh, stay connected with us. Follow us on LinkedIn and reach out by email. You're always welcome. Um, and uh, this uh, is a big thank uh, to our speaker today, Axel, Lucille, Guillaume. This was really a pleasure. Thank you all for attending. We hope you had a, a great time and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, thanks. Bye.